uh, restrictees, war collaborators, your excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, the acting mayor of the city of Ferrari, his worship councillor, Ace M. Mutizwa, senior government officials, fellow mourners, comrades and friends, we are gathered here again to pay our last respects and lay to rest one of our gallant sons and a veteran of the National War of Liberation, Major General Retired Tsukulile Simpson Nyati, who passed on on Sunday, the 5th of June, 2022. On behalf of the Zan PF Party, government, and on my own behalf, I express my heartfelt condolences to the Nyati family on this sad occasion. The loss weighs heavily on the nation as it comes when we have barely recovered from the pain and the loss of the late Nash Nairo, Major General Retired Godfrey Chanakira. In Major General Retired Simpson Nyati, the nation has lost a committed revolutionary cadre whose life and career before and after independence symbolizes what it means to be one's people and, and country above I repeat this, symbolizes what it means to be one's people and country above all else. He was intelligent, articulate, humble, jovial, warm, and likable. The late Major General Nyati was prepared to pay the ultimate sacrifice with regards the attainment of sovereignty, independence, nationalhood, and democracy of our country. Comrades and friends, the late Major General was born on 12 September 1960 at Mapate village under Chief Mate, Gwanda district, in Mativeland South Province. He did his primary education at Mapate Primary School and proceeded to Manama School for his secondary education. The repressive system put in place by the minority white settler regime laid by Ian Smith frustrated Africans in all facets of life, especially the youth, through bottlenecks that created privileges for the white settlers alone. That system, which disempowered and treated the black majority as second-class citizens, made us mere slave laborers in our own country of birth. This drove many of our brave and courageous young Zimbabweans to leave the country to join the protracted armed struggle and a fight for independence. It is in this context that Mission schools and institutions of higher learning became fertile ground for the recruitment of cadres that joined the armed struggle. At a tender age of 17 years, 
while waiting for his ordinary level examination results, the then youthful Simpson Nyati teamed up with other schoolmates from Manama Mission, such as the late Nash Nohiro and our former Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Trade, the late Lieutenant General retired Susi Somoyo, to join the liberation struggle. The contingent of such brave young fighters received conduit and transit services from neighboring countries such as Botswana, whilst Zambia, Mozambique, and Tanzania offered rear bases that made it possible to house, train, and infiltrate fighters into the country. We are grateful to these and other members of the frontline states, the Liberation Committee of the then OAU, now the African Union, among other friendly and progressive countries for their solidarity and support. The nation and in particular our young people must therefore emulate the spirit of supreme sacrifice and play a vanguard role in scaling up and accelerating efforts towards building a prosperous and united Zimbabwe from Zambezi to Limpopo and from Plum Tree to Mutare, brick upon brick, stone upon stone. My fellow mourners, the late Major General retired Simpson Nyati received initial military training in January 1978, first in Zambia, and thereafter was among the few Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army Zipra cadres that were enrolled at the higher Komsolomol political school in Moscow in the then Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. Upon successfully completing military and political training in the USSR, the late Major General returned to Zambia and was assigned to the Zipra Commissariat Department, operating from Freedom Camp in Chikumbi, Zambia. He worked in the Zapu Publicity Department, producing liberation war materials that raised the political consciousness of many of our people and mobilized the cadres to support and join the armed liberation struggle. The late Major General retired Simpson Nyati was among those caught up in the ruthless bombings at Freedom Camp by the racist Rhodesian soldiers in October 1978 which resulted in the death of hundreds and hundreds of cadres and refugees. He survived this barbaric attack and was later deployed to Mlungushi training camp as a political commissar in one of the Zipra battalions. The enduring revolutionary war of liberation was a people's war which inculcated a political consciousness that endeared cadres to the cause. This was the role that the sharp and articulate Major General retired Simpson Yati played. 
generating liberation content that galvanized cadres and masses on the importance of sacrifice and participation in the war for national liberation. The late national hero, Major General Nyati, was later deployed to the Kaba La Manja unit, commanded by the late Brigadier Collins Moyo. The unit was subjected to an air raid by the Rhodesian Air Force in the Luangwa area adjacent to the Mbire district of Marshall Central Province. Our late Major General Nyati sustained injuries that saw him being hospitalized in Luangwa, Zambia. Upon recovery, he remained undeterred and rejoined his battalion, which was now operating in the northern front around Kanyemba. He was again hospitalized at McKenney Hospital in Lusaka following injuries sustained in a grenade attack in the period just before ceasefire in 1979. Thereafter, he was deployed to the Guai River Assembly Point. Hello, monas, comrades, and friends. The experiences that Major General retired Nyati went through, including witnessing some of his colleagues being killed in the war front, is testimony that the struggle for independence was not a stroll in the park. The strong urge to fight and resist the discriminatory conditions forced on his people is the heroism that we revere and honor him for today. Together with other comrades, they did not allow themselves to be resigned and all and overwhelmed by the seemingly omnipotent settler rule. The individual and the collective vision, perseverance and sacrifices by the brave generation of our cadres is personified in the exemplary life of Major General retired Simpson Nyati. Despite Evading death by a whisker on several encounters with the Rhodesian forces, he chose to serve in the military and was attested in the Zimbabwe National Army in 1980 after independence. I commend the security sector today, including the Zimbabwe National Army for dutifully executing their constitutional mandate of guaranteeing the peaceful, secure, and a stable environment that we continue to enjoy in this country today. The late national hero contributed to the establishment of an agile, versatile, and professional Zimbabwe National Army. His versatility and commitment to serve saw him leading complex training in logistics and other demanding assignments. In recognition of his exemplary leadership in the Army and the selflessness and dedication to serve his mother country, he was awarded a number of medals for his outstanding achievements. These include the Liberation Medal, Independence Medal, Tenure Service Medal, Long and Exemplary Service Medal, the Mozambique Campaign Medal, Democratic Republic of Congo DRC Campaign Medal, and the Grand Officer 
of the Zimbabwe Order of Merit Award. The late Mayor General Retired Nyati was by no means an ordinary man, but a true revolutionary cadre who gave up everything to advance the cause of his motherland, Zimbabwe. His life provides the unfolding experiences and episodes that we as Zimbabweans should always learn from and embrace. He bequeathes to us an indelible lesson and mark in our country's history that it takes unity, supreme sacrifice, patriotism, loyalty and dedication to free and build a strong nation. It is through these virtues and values of our national character that we continue to consolidate our independence and use our land, among other natural resources and endowments, to advance our quest to become masters of our own destiny as a people. We are rising beyond the trials and tribulations of the current global shifts. The illegal economic sanctions imposed on us by the West, effects of climate change and now COVID-19, all these challenges as United Zimbabwe, we shall succeed. The spirit of commitment to our country and hard work that runs through the life of our heroes and heroines, such as Major General Retired Nyati, should galvanize us to work for the prosperity of our great Zimbabwe. This is more pertinent and urgent as the National Development Strategy lays the sound roadmap for the accelerated attainment of an upper middle income society status by 2013. I therefore challenge all Zimbabweans at home and abroad and every stakeholder to be part of this roadmap so as to modernize and just rise and grow our country and our economy. Meanwhile, my government is seized with the implementation of mechanisms to rein in the current increases in prices. In this regard, I exhort business and other stakeholders across various sectors of the economy to assume a strong sense of national responsibility and commit to the overall realization of sustainable socio-economic development and improve the quality of life of all our people. Speculative and unethical business behavior will never be tolerated at this as this weighs on the projected growth performance, performance of our country. My fellow Zimbabweans, the late national hero General Retired Nyati will forever be remembered for his sacrifices in bringing about independence along other heroes and heroines as well as defending the country during an exemplary career in the Zimbabwe National Army. Together with many other departed and living heroes and heroines, Major General Retired Nyati fought for the establishment of a government from the people, for the people, and by the people. Through devolution and decentralization, and informed by our development philosophy, Nika Inova Kwanevenevayo. We have that responsibility as Zimbabweans to build 
our own country with our own hands. My government is leaving no one and no place behind by building roads, dams, clinics, schools and registry offices among the development projects. We should therefore honor and remember the sacrifices of our dear departed distinguished sons and daughters of the soil by defending the gains of independence and development by voting ZAN PF during the 2023 harmonized general elections. We have to defend the legacy of our sovereignty and independence. Nakandedu, Nakabatema, Inochengetuan Nevatema. Furthermore, I call upon Zimbabweans, civil society organizations and political parties to conduct themselves in a peaceful and non violent manner. Violence must never be allowed in, our, in all our interactions as a people. We are a, pe a peaceful nation. Finally, to the late Mayor General Nyati, I say, Go well, our country's liberator. Go well, son of the soil. Go well. Go well, our national hero. Zorai Murugare Gambare Magamba. Rest in eternal peace, our commander. La la mokutula kawe la matkawe. Our retired commander, as he joined other cadres and luminaries. Long departed, we who remain shall continue working hard for the defense and prosperity of our motherland, Zimbabwe. God bless Zimbabwe. God bless us all. I thank you.
Jerusalem, Jerusalem. 